Velocity Livestream 2020. We are so excited to be with you this summer in your homes. And we have an action-packed program for you over the next five days. If you've not already checked out the program, then have a look at our website, weareluminosity.org. And check out also our social media channels on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. Most importantly, check out and subscribe our YouTube channel, we are Luminosity, because that's where all of our interaction with you is going to take place. And we'd love to encourage you uh, to comment as much as you can so that you can interact with our team. We are so excited for what God is going to do among us over the next few days. Now, here at Luminosity, we are all about being the generation of change makers who will pierce unimaginable darkness with the light of Jesus and do greater things than any generation before. And I'm sure you'll agree, we've all been living in dark times recently. And now is our time to be the change makers that God is asking us to step up and be. And now is the time for the light of Jesus to pierce the darkness that people in our world are living with. I just want to read you some words from the book of Matthew in the Bible, chapter 5, beginning at verse 14. It says this, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Luminosity, now is our time to shine. And so let's pray before we worship God. We thank you that you are a good God. We thank you that you are with us now by your Holy Spirit. And we ask that you would fill us up from head to toe with your presence. So we pray, come Holy Spirit. Lord, that we would be on fire for you from the very first night of luminosity. That we would shine brightly in all that we say, in all that we do. And in all of our worship to you right now. Amen. So let's go over to Josh, who's going to lead us in worship. again who you are all things are possible God of the miracle oh let your will be done we pray for heaven here today your kingdom to As you have loved us Now come and build your throne As we go where you go
And I raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies And I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My name is Emmanuel Chiweshe and I work with young people in Nottingham. Guys, I am so gutted that we can't be together right now in Peterborough, enjoying some crepes and worshipping God in person. However, 
distance is not going to stop us from encountering God and having so much fun together. I am so excited for all that is in store as we engage in luminosity online. We have pitched our tent outside in the garden. We're planning on having Chinese on one of the nights and make the experience as if we were right there with you enjoying luminosity this year. So for the next few minutes, I want to share with you what God has been saying to me about you. Yes, you. See, God wants you to know that you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Ain't that exciting? Over 2,000 years ago, many people witnessed Jesus give a number of talks. These talks are famously known as the Sermon on the Mount. And they were recorded in the book of Matthew. One of these talks was titled Salt and Light. So I'm just going to read that short, short talk to you right now. So if you want to grab your Bibles, we're going to be reading from Matthew 5, verse 13 to 16. So that's Matthew 5, verse 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. That would be pretty weird. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, you let your light shine before others and they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. Guys, this message didn't expire on that day, but lives today. And it's a message for you and me. So what does it mean? that you are the salt of the earth. See, during the time Jesus walked on earth, salt mainly, salt mainly had two purposes in the Middle East. The first use for salt was because of the lack of refrigeration, salt was used to preserve food, especially meat, which would quickly spoil in the desert environment. I would have been making sure my leftover Nando's is fresh and not going off. That's how I'll be using that salt. I truly believe that Jesus was saying then and now to us that we are preservatives of the world. Oh, I like that. See, God has entrusted us not to let his earth be destroyed and spoiled, but to keep it alive and well. I love witnessing how many young people in your generation fight for social justice, whether it's climate change or racism. Some of you are not shying away from letting your voices be heard. So please do not stop. Keep going. In, in our youth group, uh, we've got a girl called Lori, Lori Moore. Uh, Lori noticed that there was a lack of princesses that wore glasses and didn't like didn't like it and didn't think this was okay. So instead of just complaining about it, she decided to do something about it and write to Disney. Unfortunately, Disney didn't respond, but many others did. Lori's campaign has led her to working with glass companies, meeting royalty and writing her own book. Ain't that just amazing? She is helping many young girls realize they are beautiful and are princesses too, even if they don't always see princesses that look like them. I was just speaking to her the other day and she said her next job is to write a book for young boys so that princes can know that they can wear glasses too. I just completely love that. So not only are we able to preserve the earth we live in, God gives us the ability to preserve people. Just like glory, we have the ability to change lives. We step up. We give a voice to the voiceless. 
We lovingly journey with people to help them find worth, just as we see Jesus do many times in the Bible. Salt equals preservative, keeps things from going bad. And we can keep our world from going bad and people from going bad too. Secondly, salt was used then and now as a flavor enhancer. So about six months ago, we started giving our daughter the same meals as us, which meant that we had to stop putting salt in our food because babies are not allowed salt. Now, my wife is a very good cook, but between me and you, just checking, she's not around, the meals have dropped their standard. Okay, I know she's going to watch this and I'm going to get into a little bit of trouble, but I've got a good explanation, I promise. See, something was missing. The flavors did not come out like they usually do. See, I started leaving the food on the plate or covering it up with hot sauce and ketchup. Who would have known that the lack of salt would leave our food lurking from their full potential? That's the only reason why it's questionable. She's still a good cook. It's just the salt is missing. But do you know who knew? Jesus. Jesus knows everything. Jesus knew that without salt, actually, things do not taste as good and that flavors do not come out as well as they should. So without you as the salt in your communities, then we won't see them flourish to their full potential. Just like food without salt. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we have the ability to bring about great change to the world. I truly believe that God wants to use you and me to bring out the best out of people. Just like how salt does. He wants us to bring the potential out of the communities that we are involved in. There are many people out there, some that we know very, very well, that are desperate for a little bit of seasoning. All that means is that we need to walk alongside them, love them, encourage them, and equip them to be who God intends them to be. We can change the meaning of being salty to be a good thing. So you are the salt of the earth. And then the second part, he says, you are the light of the world. So guys, I have some bad news, but then I've also got some good news. The bad news is there are so many people living in unimaginable darkness and it breaks God's heart and it should break ours too. They are in our households, they are in our schools, in our friendship groups and so many other places suffering, hurting in the darkness. But here's the good news. The good news is that they don't have to live in that darkness forever. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can be the light needed in their lives. As followers of Jesus, we are called to shine for all to see, so they no longer have to live in their darkness. This means our good deeds must be evident for all to see. We need to comfort those that are being bullied, persecuted, struggling, isolated and hopeless. This is not standing out for our own glory so that we're famous, that we get all the likes and the followers. No, this is that for those that see us may be able to see Jesus and worship our God in heaven. A few years ago, I was introduced to a guy called Joe uh, and this was at his baptism. Uh, a few months before this day, Joe was an alcoholic, drug addict and living pretty rough. A friend of mine began a friendship uh, with Joe when he was at his lowest and his kindness was something unknown to Joe. As months went by and this relationship deepened, Joe was introduced to Jesus and at his baptism, he shared how Jesus had always been with him but had not realized it before and he was grateful for the people God sent to him. For the coming years, Joe led many people to Jesus and built so many friendships along the way. Unfortunately, Joe passed away a few months ago, 
but his story lives on. The day Joe gave his life to Jesus, he became a light for all those around him that were in darkness. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, he changed so many lives. I see myself in Joe, and you might too. I was once lost and feeling hopeless, but God sent people into my life to be the light I desperately needed. So will you be the light for those that are desperate for it today? You are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. But guys, what can stop us from this happening? Well, the devil is going to try to stop us. He is the prince of darkness. He is opposed to light. The first thing he may try to do, he will try to cripple us with fear through lies. The devil will try to convince you that you are not good enough and it's best if you leave being salt and light to other people. Do not believe him. Jesus empowered and trusted those that didn't seem good enough. And because of their faithfulness, we get to be the church we see today. We get to be luminosity. Jesus has chosen you because he knows you, he loves you, he trusts you, and knows that you're the right person for the job. The second thing that the devil may try to do is convince you to settle for what is convenient and easy. That might look like avoiding talking to our friends about Jesus, being lazy, I've been guilty of that so many times, or just conforming to what the people around you are doing because you think you might not be liked if you didn't do it. Do not settle. Do not settle. Jesus is calling you to be a leader, not to just follow people blindly. By stepping up and out and not conforming, other people will see the light in you and may decide to be more like you. So as scripture says, take that bowl from your head and let your light shine for all to see. Because we would look pretty silly with balls on our head. We need to shine. And the third thing that the devil will try to do is prevent us from daily taking up our crosses. The devil hates it when we worship, pray and read our Bibles. Because he knows the more time we spend with God, we grow in our faith and become more capable to change the world that we live in. So luminosity, let's not compromise our relationship with God and become like lukewarm Christians. The world needs us. The world needs you to daily take up your cross and follow Jesus. So as I come to land, guys, I just want to say, let us go out there and put some flavor into the world. Let's shine so bright that no one can miss your light. And guys, for those that are listening today and you're thinking, Emmanuel, I'm in that darkness. I'm desperate to see the light. Know that we are praying for you, we love you, and there are people around you that would love to help you if you are willing. You just need to reach out to them. And you can also do that by just spending time with God and saying, here I am. God, shine your light on me. I no longer want to be in this darkness. So guys, I'm just going to pray and then we're going to enjoy the rest of the things planned. Let's pray. God, firstly, thank you that you love us and that you trust us and that you know us. Thank you that you choose uh, me and my friends to be your salt and light on this earth. Thank you that we get to take part in making a difference. God, give us the boldness and the courage uh, where it's lacking. God, help us be the people that we want to be and not to listen to the lies of the devil. And God, we just pray for anybody that is feeling like they're in darkness right now. I just pray that 
Lord, you may surround them with people that will show them love and that will um, shine their light for them. God, I pray through this experience of luminosity online that so much freedom may take place and may happen for so many people. God, we want to hear stories of your glory coming and relieving people from their darkness and the chains that hold them down. So God, we just thank you that you are loved, that you are good, and you are with us and for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, we love you and can't wait to see you again very soon. Take care. So Luminosity, I've got a great friend of mine. His name is Joel. Hello, Joel. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing? Well, you can't answer me, but maybe you're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing absolutely marvellous. I can guarantee that, Joel. Um, Joel, thanks so much for being with us at Luminosity 2020. We are so chuffed that you're with us. And I know you've got an amazing story um, of how God's impacted your life and how God is using your life uh, for, for big things and to be an influence uh, in the world today. So, Joel, we'd love to hear a little bit more about that. So why don't you just introduce yourself to everyone? Of course. Hello, everyone. My name's Joel Harris. I am 19 years old. I live in Ipswich, Suffolk. Only thing you'll know about that is Ed Sheeran lives here. So apart from that, we've done nothing good. <laughs> um, so I, right now, I work for a charity called Consumer Hope, we'll say Mental Health Wellbeing Charity, alongside doing social media ministry online. Wow. Um, have you met Ed Sheeran? No, but if you ask anyone else in this town, everyone's got an Ed Sheeran story. Yeah, I'm sure they have. <laughs> now, Joel, um, throughout lockdown, I've seen your face quite a lot on Instagram. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I, I actually felt when, I, when we logged into this Zoom uh, interview, I actually felt like I'd seen you every day during lockdown. Uh, but you have an amazing presence on Instagram at the minute. And um, each day you're working through one of the Gospels, are you? Just tell us what, what you're doing at the minute. Yeah, of course. So lockdown hit. And I thought, I think a lot of people thought this, we're going to have so much more time on our hands. Yeah, I was like, awesome, what should I do, God? What do you want me to do with my social media? Like, what can I do? I'm not going to take photos now, Mike, like, for a while. I just felt good, just do a Bible study. Like, I felt he's been asking me to do it for a while. So I was like, okay, why not? Let's do it. So I chose Luke um, because I like Luke because he, he was a doctor. So he just says that as he is. There's no riffle waffle. He just says that as it is. What's very, what I really enjoy. Um, what I didn't realise was Luke's a very, very long gospel. I'm 100 days in right now into this Luke. Um, I've studied, we've got about a week left. But yeah, it's been amazing really. It's meant every day, what I really like, is every day I've had to actually get something out of it. Because I think when we read, if you read a few chapters in your quiet time, you can gloss over things and just yeah. find the easy things what, what's saying there. But sometimes I've had three verses and it was like, they went here and then here. And I'm like, God, what are you trying to tell me today? Like, what's going on? So it's been very much a growth process on making sure I look at commentaries and read enough and everything about it. Yeah. Now, uh, Joel, I I've heard you say uh, previously that kind of social media influencers are the idols of, of this generation of young people today. Um, and I know you've got a bit of a backstory to kind of your life in, in terms of social media. Just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, of course. So um, if we, to understand it a lot, I have to start with when I was in primary school. So I had very early on found out that I had very severe dyslexia. So I had to do something different to everyone else. I had to learn different. I had to be a bit different in how I um, was in school. So for example, most of you will know, in years like well, reception to year two, you read these chips called Biff and Chip. Yeah, yes. you read these called Biff and Chip, yeah? Yeah. Um, I was reading them in year six, because I just couldn't, I couldn't read at oh. all. And like, so in year six, we have a spelling test every week and every week I'd get zero out of 10. I was consistent, I'll give myself that. So I felt very out of it. I wasn't a normal person, I knew I was different. And it was very much this idea of, okay, if I'm different, where do I get my identity from? 
And I got bullied a lot in primary school. So moving to high school, I didn't want to be known. I didn't want people to know about me. I wanted to be kept quiet. And I wanted no one to see me. And hopefully I'll just get through it under the radar and not get bullied and be fine. And when I was 14, I started doing YouTube. When I look back on it now, I think I started doing it because I wanted affirmation. Yeah. I wanted to be famous. I wanted to be known because if I was being known, people would actually see me. So I started doing YouTube. Started making these stupid funny videos in my bedroom. They were terrible. Um, a year later, I got invited to London to do a free meeting greet where we meet um, viewers of ours. And there's loads of YouTubers there and there's loads of viewers. And I went. No one knew who I was, but a lot of people pretend to know who I was because they do that at events. And from there, I got chucked into this crazy world for two, three years of um, doing a lot of gigs and events across the country where I would present and host and we'd have people who are on X Factor up and come as singers and they perform and then we'd have a meet and greet afterwards and we'd do this kind of like show. And I did that for two, three years, travelling across the country at wow. 16 to 18, 15 to 18, something like that. And it was, it was crazy, it was awesome, but through it all, I struggled with my mental health, I struggled with my identity. So my social media grew, mm-hmm. but it was never enough. I'd post a photo and be like, oh, I got a thousand likes there, that's good. But I need 2,000. I'll get 2,000. Oh, I need 3,000. Like, I'd always need more. And my whole happiness, my mm. whole equilibrium was deciding on if I got followers and likes that day. So I'd be happy or I'd be really sad. So that was my first kind of encounter with mental health and this idea of, oh, I'm controlled by this. Mm-hmm. But then through these meet and greets, I had people my age come up to me and show me their suicide letters. They'd show me where they'd self-harmed. They'd tell me about their stories, about how they're depressed, how they're anxious, and how they don't know if they can get through this. And my heart really broke for my generation and all this stuff through those two, me experiencing it, then me seeing people experience it. I started doing the social media and at the age of 18, I was like, okay, who am I doing this for? I really felt God going, Joel, who are you doing this for? You're making funny videos. You're posting photos with clothing brands so you get free clothes. You call yourself an influencer. But what are you influencing? When I look back, I made people laugh. What's well, awesome. The all else influence was, hey, go and buy this mm. clothing brand. I wasn't influencing anything. And my identity was so caught up in it. And it was so much me. And yeah. it it was hard. And God was like, I need you to do this for me, Joel. I need you to do this for me. You can't do this for yourself now. You're not influencing me. I was like, oh, <laughs> that sounds fun. God, I cut deep. It sounds really good, like me doing it for you. One, I'm not, too, not good enough Christian. Two, I like, I like this. Like when it's good, it's really good. So for a couple of months, me and God played tug of war with my social media. Never play tug of war of God. He always wins. He can always bench more than you guys. Just remember that. He can always take you. So um, I said to God, okay, if you want me to stop doing this, close the door on fashion. It hurts. And in a month, I went from one, 2,000 likes to 150 likes. It was impossible. And it's like, oh, okay, God, that really hurts. You definitely closed the door on that one. Um, okay. I started doing it for you, so I took a break and I started doing it for God. And I was like, awesome. This means, I started doing it for God, in a week I'll have a million followers, because <laughs> that's how it works, isn't it? Um, but actually, like, um, in the first year, I lost 70% of my audience. I lost 70% of my likes. I lost most of it. Um, and I was like, oh wow, this hurts. Mm-hmm. But through that still, God was making sure my identity was in Him. Going, yeah. hey, where... Why is it? Why is, why is that hurting? So you don't, you, you don't own this anymore. But yeah, go ahead. Joe, what you say, you know, you, you, you lost a lot of likes, a lot of followers, that kind of thing. But I suppose, what did you gain from it? Like, what, where's the positives come in? Surely yeah. the most specific. No, yeah, of course. The, in, in, in the whole thing, some crazy stuff happened doing it. I'm still doing it. Like, I would be out with my friends and people would come to me going, oh, you do those things about God and you preach, don't you? I'm like, yeah. He's like, I don't believe in it. I think it's all rubbish, but I watch it. I'm like, sick, cool. Right, I'll catch you in a bit then, kind of thing. <laughs> and it's talking to friends, talking to people who don't believe in God and going, Joe, your stuff's really interesting. 
Yeah. I learn a lot from it. And for me, it was this redefining of what success looks like. That's good. So my idea of success was getting a million followers. Mm. God's idea of success was me speaking into people's lives. Yeah. And God had to redefine how I feel about it. So I might not have a load of followers, but days, every day I get people going, hey, that's awesome we're doing. Hey, I've learned from that. Well, that's interesting. Tell me more about that. And it's opened up conversations. It's allowed me to do things like this. And yeah. it allowed me to go and preach to teenagers and really invest in them. So yeah. this redefinition of success was me trying to figure out, hey, God, why am I doing this? Yeah. And what makes you happy in this? And there's those moments where people learn about him, where people find out more, or where I've got people who are younger than me looking up and going, oh, that's a good influence to invest, to look at. Yeah. Yeah. That's what makes God happy. That's building the kingdom, not me getting a number of followers <laughs> on Instagram. So that's been the positive, really. That, that's so good because, I, I mean, a lot about our culture today is about how we be, can become an overnight kind of movie, movie star sensation and celebrity. Um, and, and what you've just said there is about, you know, the importance of as actually as a, a disciple of Jesus, it's all about having an audience of one, you know, yeah. of, of God. Um, and I, I'm just kind of struck by how many people watching this might actually be stuck in that, in that, unhealthy rhythm I suppose of always trying to strive for other people's affirmation when actually all they need to to know and hear for themselves is the affirmation of, of the one who is God like what would what would be your encouragement no. uh, to those be it, yeah definitely the this idea of the one was massive when I did when I did this session for myself my mom would always go Joe you're doing it for the one to do it for the one I'd be like yeah it's cool but I'm not getting likes on my mom like it's cheers <laughs> Um, in the past few years, I've been really thinking, what am I doing this for? And the idea, the idea is you can either go for two different kinds of affirmation. You can run for human affirmation, mm. and you can get it for a bit, and it's fun. But eventually, humans get bored. Eventually, there's a better person. Eventually, there's all of that. You're never going to be relevant the whole time. You're never going to be able to be relevant. There's always so much rockiness in that. Or you can run for one person's affirmation, God's. And God never changes. He's always the same. He's strong. He can cope. He loves you. He created you. He's got a plan for you. And to get affirmation from him is simply going, God, what do you think about me? Mm. No, God, you're loved. You're beautiful. You're accepted. You belong. And you instantly start building your identity on these truths Mm. That will never change. And that will never go away depending on your actions. And you come to this peace and this foundation of your identity where you go, hey, I know what the creator of the earth says about me. Wow. And I'm not that fussed anymore about what other people say about me because my God's voice is a lot louder than those people's voices. Wow. That's incredible, isn't it? Mm. And you said before, Joel, um, you know, your, your involvement and constant pressure to, to get all of these likes and, and, and be this person of influence on social media actually had a, an impact on your own personal mental health. Um, and that is such a, you know, a significant, if not the most significant issue in, in young people's lives generally uh, today. Um, you know, just if it's all right, just tell us a little bit about your own journey through uh, mental health and um, how that's led you now to, to do what, what you currently do. Yeah, of course. Um, so my journey of mental health was very much in the same correlation with my journey with social media. Um, I'd be very upset. I would be motivated. I wouldn't be happy when I didn't get likes. And I'd be happy when I did. And what that means is I'd go through stages where I just didn't have emotions. I just felt nothing. I had no motivation. And I go through other stages where this is amazing and awesome. And doing all that and being who I was and who I am, I love to work. And I don't ha and I hate to rest because my identity got so caught up in mm. my work being my value. So I'd burn out. And burnout for me 
We look like three days in bed. No emotion, always sad, completely gone. And that was massive. And my, through that, my own struggles, and then through meeting all these people and telling me theirs, my heart broke for this. And this idea of our generation being captives of mental health and how that can control our lives. Like, I, it's funny, but when I was younger, I wouldn't go to school some days if I had a bad haircut. Like, look at my hair now. If I had that decision, I would never be out. But it's, I, I, it's better than mine, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> but I, looking, looking back, I sometimes wouldn't go to school if I had a bad hair day. That fear of rejection yeah. controlled my education. And I came to this conclusion that if we can free my generation from the shackles of mental health, my generation yeah. can go further than any other generation before them. Wow. So this led me to start working with Kintsugi Hope. Kintsugi yeah. Hope's a mental health charity. Kintsugi stands for, and it's beautiful, it's a Japanese art form. When you break a pot in the UK, we fix it, we try and hide the glue. We try and hide the cracks. In Japan, we put gold powder in the cracks. That pot becomes more beautiful mm-hmm. and more unique than ever before. Wow. It's the idea of beauty into brokenness. There's beauty in your brokenness. There's beauty in your scars. So I work for them. And my main thing for me to tell young people is look where your affirmation identity is from. You can chase worldly affirmation. And I did it for years. And it's not going to get you anywhere. It'll work for a bit. And for a bit, you'll be so happy. Mm. And then you'll just fall off and you and you won't be good. Yeah. Or, you can put your identity in God and in a firm foundation and you are strong and you will stay the same and God will look after you and God will affirm you. And there's this um, parable Jesus talks about of a man building his house on sand and a man building his house on rock. And when the storm came and when the um, world changed around him, the person on sand, his house crumbled. The person whose his house on the rock stayed the same. When the storm comes in our lives, and right now, in COVID, we're in a storm. I think this is a very big storm. Yeah. Um, if you haven't got your affirmation in God, if you haven't got your foundation of your identity in God, you can and you will crumble. Mm. Because, well, the affirmation isn't always going to be there. When the rainy day comes, it's not going to be there. But God will. So I can see you have youth. We um, really want to help teenagers understand that you can find your affirmation you can find your identity and your purpose in god and that is a purpose what outlives your time and your life on this earth and that's incredible amen so joe how how would um you know perhaps a young person listening just what you've just shared now um actually really relates to that particular that image of that japanese art you know the cracked pottery and being put together with 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 gold and, and not glue and actually it being more beautiful than it was before you know there's probably people watching this thinking i i do i do feel broken right now um and i, I want someone to put me back together and we know, you know, only God can do that mm. and, and make us more beautiful. Um, what, how can a young person um, tap into what what you you do at Kintsugi? Of course. Of course, no, of course. So one of the main things we do is mm. we've created this material, what, six weeks long, where you um, run it in your youth groups and you chat about your well-being. It's peer support. You all learn from each other. And you create this safe space where you can be vulnerable, you can be open, and people can invest in you, and you can invest in people. It's this beautiful thing where each other, is you, you all go, neither, none of us are perfect. Not all of us are going to wrong, but we can all help each other. Let's walk alongside each other. So we create these um, groups in what your youth leaders will run in your youth group. And if you'd want to do that, if you want to um, invest in your mental health that way, just beg your youth leader to run one of those groups and they'll run it. Because what happens is in those groups we've, we found is you grow massively. Because the first step to fixing, the first step to helping your mental health 
is talking about it, it's being open. It's going, hey, look, I struggle. People go, oh, I struggle with that. That's what I did. Someone going, me too. Let's help each other. So yeah, ask your youth leader, come here on the Kintsugi Hope Youth Wellbeing Group and go through that way. Or you can check out all, all, all of our stuff online. What, there's a lot of stuff there that can help you. Brilliant. Yeah, and, and from Luminosity, we, we wholeheartedly want to say we absolutely endorse um, what Kintsugi are doing. And you know, get on to your youth worker or your church lead, whoever uh, helps you in your walk uh, in faith with Jesus in your local church context, get on at them and make sure that they can tap into all of these incredible resources because it's so, so important. Um, Joel, finally, I wondered if you would just perhaps pray, pray for young people watching this who do relate to that broken piece of pottery and they um, they see themselves as that at the moment and just want God to put them back together and make them whole and, 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 and to make them feel that they are beautiful uh, masterpieces as scripture tells us that we're, we're all God's masterpiece. W- would you be willing to pray for, for this generation of young people? May I be honoured, let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you are perfect. Thank you that you never change, that you are always consistent, and that we can rely on you. Thank you that it goes in the Bible that in our weakness, in our imperfections, you make you are made perfect. You work through them, God. Thank you that our scars isn't something we'd be ashamed of, but our scars is something we should be proud of because you brought us out of that. God, we pray for everyone listening who is struggling, who feels like there's no way out, who feels trapped, who feels lonely, who feels like no one loves them. God, help them to see your love. Help them to see what you say of them, that they're beautiful, that they're wonderful, that they're loved, they're accepted, that they belong, that they have a seat at the table, that they have a place where they can come to you and have a relationship with you. God, we pray against the lies that they're the only one who pray against the lies that people th- think that if you have mental health, you're weak. Pray against the lies that no one else has struggled with it, Lord. Help them to realise it's okay not to be okay. And it's okay to talk about your problems because when we start to talk about our problems is the first step to healing, God. Lord, we love you. We just want to be more like you. We want to live out your word and build your kingdom on this earth. Help us do that. Amen. Amen. Joel, thank you so much, brother, for being with us. You're an absolute legend. Hi, I'm Grace. And I'm Lizzie, and we're from Portsmouth. This morning we've come down to the beach for a morning swim and to watch the sunrise and it's been absolutely beautiful. Yeah, um, but these last few months they've been really quite difficult because we've um, had to finish school really fast um, and everything's just been up in the air. So yeah, and it's it can get really scary at times because we don't know the future and we don't know what's going to happen. We're in year 11, we will be going into college but we don't know how any of this is going to work. Yeah. But we're putting it in God's hands. Yeah, it's been a great opportunity to um, just look to God um, whenever we have struggles. And And it's given people time to look to God as well. Yeah, so this morning I woke up with quite a lot of fear and um, after reading the Bible, I found a Psalm, Psalm 32, um, verses six to seven. Lydia's gonna read it now uh, and it gave me so much encouragement. So I'd like to share that with you now. Right. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you, while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. 
You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I just love the way that this verse describes that even though the waters can rise up, uh, the waters of anxiety and uncertainty, we always have God to go to and he's our hiding place and, and he's our place of safety. It reminds us to thank, uh, count our blessings and to thank God no matter what situation we're in because he has got this time in his hands completely and he has got a plan for the future and it's going to be amazing. Thank you guys and we hope that you are all well. Cold in the sea. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's sorry. I'm making it like casual, you know? Yeah, actually, yeah. I was lost, but he born me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, always oh, free in thee. I'm a child of God. Yes, I. Forsaken, I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Say I am. Oh, I am who you say I am. Yes, I am. 
Wow, what an amazing first night. God is already at work among us, encouraging us with his words. And what a gift it is to worship him so freely like we've been doing tonight in our own homes. I'm so expectant for what God's going to continue doing among us over the next few days. And remember, tonight is only the first night. So let's be praying wherever we are tonight that he would open up our hearts and minds 
to what he wants to do in each of us over the next few days. My encouragement to you now is to stay on this YouTube channel because we're going to be going live for some prayer ministry. We'd love to pray with you and to respond to some of what God has been speaking to us tonight. And then later on at 9 o'clock, we have the Luminosity after party. We'll see you there.